This is Gary Hines of the three-time Grammy Award-winning Sounds of Blackness. Please stand by for Season 8 of Let's Talk to the Lord, Gospel Radio Show, created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Trying to do what's right, but it does. Muscle your hustle, 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 muscle your
currently resides in Atlanta, Georgia, and has ministered and performed before thousands of people during his career as an artist. And amazingly, at over 50 years of age, is showing no signs of slowing down. Minister Todd, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is an honor and a pleasure to join you all this morning. And um, I'm just excited about uh, what God is doing. And uh, just overall, I'm blessed just to, to be on your platform. It's an honor, Apostle Ross. Amen. And Minister Todd, please share with the kingdom a little more about you. Who is Minister Todd in the body of Christ and in the kingdom of God? Right. Well, whew, Minister Todd has come a long way. <laughs> Amen. I uh, just, uh, you know, I, I grew up, uh, my mom loved me and um, I had an all right um uh, situation with my family, but as time went on, got into a, a dysfunctional situation with um, a relationship my mom got into, which kind of went downhill. But uh, maybe I'm getting a bit uh, emotional and, and too intuitive right now. What I am in the body of Christ is a representative for Jesus. I'm a gospel recording artist, holy hip-hop artist, um, Christian rapper, and um, uh, but not not always. I've, I've been in secular music for quite a, quite a few years, um, but I go out to different places um, to deliver the message of God in the unique way that God has given it to me, schools, churches, correctional facilities, to minister to them through the gift of Christian rap. That's what I do. I'm a Christian co- comedian, motivational speaker, um, gospel artist, and, uh, yeah, pretty much. Amen. And Brother Gregory, please share your testimony of repentance and your journey to relationship with our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, I actually, um, I got um, hooked on cocaine, crack cocaine back in 1985. You know, on that particular day when it happened, it was a um, Saturday afternoon and I was leaving my aunt's house and I actually was supposed to be going to the to the park and I noticed a group of people standing uh, outside of this house just acting really strange you know my mother told me she said Greg she said you're just a little bit too nosy for your age you need to just stay out of a lot of stuff but I guess you know my curiosity dragged me into this yard where these people were and um, I was like what's going on over here and it was like Man, they got something in there. I was like, God, what? So I go into this people's house, uh, someone's house I didn't even didn't even know. I wasn't familiar with the home. Went inside the house upstairs, and that, the, the young man couldn't have been any older than about 13, no older than 14 years old, and he had this pipe in his hand with this white substance in the palm of his hand. And I was like, what is that? And he said, well, it's crack. And I thought, what's crack? And so he, he put the... Um, he put the substance onto this pipe, and, and he, he put a lighter to it, and he held it toward my mouth, and he said, all you got to do is just breathe in the smoke really, really slowly. And um, a- after that instance, you know, like I, I immediately became addicted to this substance when it hit my bloodstream. It was like uh, it, nothing I'd ever experienced in my entire life. And um, I remember asking him, because after I sat there for a minute, and the effects of it began to uh, settle down. I asked him for some more, and he was like, $10. And I was like, I don't have $10. So the first thing that went through my mind was to go home and to steal some money, and I had never done that in my entire life. And so just moving on forward, I did go home. I didn't steal anything out of my house because my family member didn't play. My family members didn't play that, my mom, my aunt. So ultimately, um, about a week or so later, I ended up running away from home. And um, I ended up out in the streets. Um, I had a job working uh, at a little restaurant, lost that job, and I needed to acquire money for the cocaine. So it started with panhandling, uh, progressed to uh, shoplifting. Uh, it went on to um, breaking and entering, you know, and just overall just stealing. Um, and then at the end of the day, before it was all, actually all over with, I was dealing with men and women to get money for cocaine. 
and that went on to uh, depression. Depression led to a spirit of suicide. And um, so I was out of, fast forward a little bit further, I was out in the street in about August of 2002, and I was walking around trying to get money for cocaine, and I was um, asking people for money, and it wasn't working. I mean, generally I would go out into the streets to get money, and I would panhandle for a while, and I would get enough money to get me high, you know, for a few hours that day. But this day it was like nothing was working. And so um, I don't know why I started doing this, but I started panhandling using the name of Jesus. Uh, I was telling people, man, with God is my witness in Jesus' name. I just got out of jail and just need to get some money to get something to eat. And um, people started giving me money. I mean, not everybody, but I, I started acquiring money a little bit more, a little more rapidly than I had previously. And so um, uh, toward the end of that hustle, people started telling me, Brother Greg, I'm going to give you this money, but if you're lying, that's between you and God. And so I heard what they were saying, but I, I just continued to do it. So I made about $105 in an hour. And um, a- after I got that money, I left Edgewood, downtown Atlanta, and I headed up to Boulevard, made a right onto Boulevard, and I was walking down the street. And I was going to the crack house. I was less than a block from the crack house as I was walking when I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me in the middle of the street. And he, he said, this day. He said, this day your soul shall be dealt with. So I'm not high, but I had the money to get high. So I I just kept walking. I said, man, you crazy. Nobody's talking to you. Uh, About 10 seconds later, his voice came back. And he said, this day I call for judgment on the soul of Gregory Lee Todd. And at that moment, he told me who he was. He said, for it is I, the Alpha. It is I, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the one with the keys to both heaven and hell. It is I, the God of your father. It is I, the God of your father's father. It is I, both the God of Isaac, Abraham, and of Jacob. And for the sins that thou hast committed against me, this day you shall suffer from an eternity. And his voice had landed on me so heavily, man, it felt like a ton of bricks. I don't know if anyone else could hear it, but I heard it, and it knocked me flat down to the ground. By the time I got up, I was standing in the street shaking uncontrollably, and I said, Lord God, please forgive me. And he said, no, my son, it's too late for that. This day your soul shall be dealt with. And I felt pure electricity come down on me in the street, and he snatched me in the ground the first time. And as you can imagine, it, the sun was out at one second because it was about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And the next section, the next second I'm under the ground in complete darkness. And I said, Lord God, where am I? And he said, my son, for the place that thy soul has been cast into is referred to as the abyss. He said, this is the bottomless pit of darkness and torment of which you shall remain until the day of damnation. And in this place, while I was falling, he allowed me to see the day I was born. I watched myself come out of my mother's womb. I saw them cut my umbilical cord, wipe the blood off me. I went from an infant to a toddler, preteen, teenager, young man, to an adult man. At that point, I began to age. I went from a young man to an, old, to an older man to an elderly man, and I saw this gentleman laying in a casket with his hands across his chest. And I said, who is that? And he said, see the day of your death. The casket slammed shut, and my feet were back up on the ground for the first time, and I'm standing in the street screaming, just saying, Lord, please forgive me. He said, no, my son, it's too late for that. And he snatched me a second time back into the ground. And this time when I descended into the ground, it was so hot I couldn't believe it. I said, Lord God, where am I? He said, my son, for the place that your soul has been cast into is referred to as Gehenna. He said, this is the lake of fire, the second death, the place of eternal torment and suffering of which you shall remain until the day of damnation. And as I'm falling into this place, I could see these gray images all around me. And I said, Lord God, what are these? And he told me that they were souls. And he said, my son, these are the souls that are descending into this place by the second. And I asked him again, I said, Lord God, what are these? He said, my son, these are the souls that are continuously descending into this place by the second. For hundreds of thousands of souls descend, are descending into this place every single second. And I saw them coming in like raindrops. As I continued to fall, he touched my eyes and allowed me to look downwards, and I could see the lake of fire. In the lake of fire, I could see people in the souls in the fire burning. And uh, I, I watched these people in the fire. I could see the fire burning the flesh from their bodies and their bones. And 
the flesh would return only to have the fire of hell to burn the flesh from their bodies and their bones once again. And as I continued to descend downward, he touched my eyes and let me look into the flames. And I could see these, these things moving through the fire at a high rate of speed. And I said, Lord God, what are these? And he said, my son, see the worms that never dieth. And I asked him again, I said, Lord God, what are these? He said, my son, these are the worms that are continuously tormenting the souls that are in the fire for eternity, for this is the judgment. And I watched these worms going into the souls. I watched people pulling handfuls of worms out of their foreheads, the eye sockets, their nose, and from out of all of their body parts from out of their mouths, and, and uh, for every handful of worms that they would pull out of themselves, thousands more would just rush right back into them. And, and right before I fell into the lake of fire, I saw two words come out of the flame, and the word said, you knew. And I, I fell into the lake of fire screaming. Uh, next few seconds, the Lord placed my feet back up on the ground above, and I'm standing in the street just screaming like I lost my mind, and I said, Lord God, Please forgive me, Lord, please forgive me. And I heard a female voice come into my left ear, and she said, son, she said, you thank him. She said, you just thank him. And I just started saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I couldn't move for quite some time because of the fear that was instilled in me because of what happened to me. And um, after I, I stood there for a while and I was able to regain my senses and start walking, I asked myself, I said, who in the world was that? I was referring to that female voice that came into my uh, right ear. And, and the Lord God said to me, he said, my son, for the voice of the woman that has spoken unto thou was the mother of your Savior, Mary. And that, that particular instance happened to me over 20 years ago. I haven't picked up another needle, another pipe, another drink, uh, another bag of weed or whatever. It's been 20 years, and, and, and the Lord has totally delivered me. I got set free that night. The story is a little bit more extended, but, you know, I had to, comp I had to compile it uh, just for this instance. But um, Apostle Ross, I, I guess I've given them what they wanted. Now back to you. Amen, amen, and amen again. Minister Todd, please, sir, announce our topic, begin our discussion, and let's go to the Word of God. Amen. Well, the, the topic is 110% sin-free. Okay, now, I'm going to take this, this from, with, from my perspective where I was in the world, you know, because I, I did get hooked on cocaine in 1985, and um, my situation was literally no different than anyone else's because I'm sure there are other people that have dealt with not maybe not the same significant instances that I had, but people have dealt with items and uh, systematic situations in their lives that have pulled them, you know, into disobedience, into dysfunction, and uh, that's where I was. But, you know, when I say 110% sin-free, um, the Word of God declares, you know, that you could be set free. John 10 and 10 says, you know, that the thief cometh not but to, for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But yeah. Christ said that I've come that they might have life and they might have that life more abundantly. So what, what, whatever life you had, you know, or whatever you were in the midst of or, or dealing with, you know, this is the, the reason why, why Jesus came. And, and I'm so thankful that he did and that the word of God remains to be uh, the same and to reside today as the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, you know, from the very beginning. You know, heaven and earth gonna, may pass away, but the word of God is going to last forever. And if that had not been so, if it had not been true, I'd be in the lake of fire right now. I'm so thankful, you know, for the word of God. And I'm, I'm very thankful for the intercessory and the God intervening in my life, Jesus being who he said he is and doing what he's only and only he is capable of doing, coming and setting my soul free because I was living for the world. I was living for Satan. I was running for Satan. I was doing drugs for the enemy. I was doing music for the enemy. My whole life had been submerged in, 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 in sinning activity, and uh, that's where I was. And no matter how badly I may have wanted to get out of that situation, I've been an atheist, 
I've been a Muslim. I was into some Buddhist beliefs, and I was buried in some satanic stuff. Um, and, and But none of these things uh, were able to deliver me. You know, yeah. the beliefs that I had kept me in bondage. You know, like the, even praying uh, to the red sun toward the east as a Muslim and even the Ramadan, none of that set my soul free. I called on everything in the, in the book but was never able to be, ever to be delivered in any way, shape, or form. I been, had been to rehab facilities, was never able to be set free from the bondage that I was in. Apostle Ross, I was doing ice, ecstasy, heroin, acid, powder, crack, cigarettes, alcohol, PCP, crystal meth. I was smoking two to three packs of cigarettes today. I was breaking in people's houses 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I was sleeping with men and women to get money to get crack cocaine. I was robbing drug dealers. I had people looking for me. My head was on a platter, and I was a dead man walking. And I was a I was 110% submerged in sin at that point with no way out. But before my mother passed, she told me, she said, Greg, if you ever get yourself into a situation that you can't get out of, you need to call on the name of Jesus Christ. And when you call on him, you need to mean it with every bit of your heart. When you call God, don't play with it, son. You need to mean what you say, and you say what you mean, and he'll come for you. And if I don't remember anything else, the day that I almost lost my soul, I called on Jesus' name, and I told him, I said, Lord, if I'm in trouble. I'm a dead man. And I said, if you don't save me, I know I'm going to die. And he came and got me. In that name, in that name alone, it wasn't in the name of Elijah Muhammad. It wasn't in the name of, of, of any other understanding or belief. It wasn't in the name of Joseph Smith. It wasn't in the name of Buddha. It wasn't in the name of, you know, whatever you want to call it. It was just one name. I, I called on the name of Jesus. And, and yeah. not only not only did he come to get me, he came and got me and set me free from every aspect of bondage that I was stuck in because I was stuck. I was stuck in the mud, but he came and got me and covered me with the blood. Not only did he come and get me, I say again, he delivered me. He took everything I was bound by and delivered me from it. It's crazy, but at this point in my life, I'll be, I'm 55 years old, on my way to being 56. And yeah. Jesus is, is a pinnacle of, 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 of safety and protection and sustainment in my life. I wouldn't have another God. I, I would not. He is everything I've ever needed, and he's even that which I didn't know I needed. He fit the description and filled me up, man. And the funny part about it is when he delivered me, like he took the bondage, but he left me with the taste so I can still taste the cigarettes. I could still taste the, what the meth tasted like. I could still taste the, the alcohol and the taste of it burning as it went down. I can still taste, you know, the, the taste of the heroin. But the, there's no bondage there. And I asked him about that. Because normally when I would begin, when I would go on those three to five day crack binges, my wife would tell you, if I got a, a sip of alcohol into my mouth, that would set me off. And I would be, <clears throat> I would be on a mission to 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 find the cocaine because alcohol went with cigarettes cigarettes went with the cocaine it was just like these 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 demonically satanic bondages that i had they were like bananas what like like they came in bunches one addiction was addicted to the brought on another addiction and that addiction brought on another addiction so for me if i had to have a, if i had a drink i had to have a cigarette if i had a cigarette i had to have a hit I had to have a hit. I had to have some powder. You know, just one thing just led to another. But as I was saying that, when he came and got me, he took the bondage, and he left me with the taste. And I asked God about that one day. I said, God. I said, Lord Jesus. I said, this is so funny. I said, I don't need it any longer, but I can still taste it. I said, why would you do that? And he told me, he was very clear. He said, my son. He said, so you'll never forget where I brought you from, you know. And so I could detect a lot of things. I can detect when people have, if they're smoking, if they're drinking, if they are uh, doing any kind of dope, I can detect the spirit of homosexuality. I don't, care. I don't care what you're trying to cover it with. 
I can detect it because I've been there. I know the bondage. I'm familiar with that stronghold. And can't nobody tell me nothing. I, I don't walk around arrogant about that. But God has, has man, it's, it's just amazing. I'm thankful for all of the, um, uh, the aspects of detection that the Holy Spirit has given me. Um, it, it has enhanced my ability to go forward and to speak into the lives of people that are dealing with things that either, number one, they will not confess or that uh, average people will not be able to detect. You know, I, but I don't go out pointing fingers to people and accusing this, this, uh, them of this and that. I just let the Lord have his way. I give people what God gives me, and I give God the glory. Amen. It works for me. So that, that pretty much should give you um, an overall ground-laid foundation of um, where I'm at with this. But when, when I say uh, in John 10 and 10, when it says, the thief cometh not but for to kill and to destroy. He's coming after your blessings. He's coming after your future. He's coming after your favor. Anything that God has placed in your life, Satan wants you to have no connection with in any way, shape, or form. He comes, uh, he, he is empathic. He'll put himself in your path to redirect you from where God wants you to go. But thank God for the redemptive hand and the re- redirecting presence of the Holy Ghost Spirit. All I can do is just tell the Lord, thank you for, for saving my life. And I can say that I'm 110% sin-free, not through me, but I'm 110% sin-free through Jesus Christ. I bless him for that because the last part of that passage says that, and Christ said that I've come that they might have life and have that life more abundantly. And that's what I've acquired. I have acquired life more abundantly. I am walking in the fullness. I'm not a perfect man, but I'm perfect through Christ, and he's changing me every day. I'm dying daily. I'm not who I used to be. I may not be who I'm going to be, but I'm shown off on my way. And I just want to thank, you know, thank the Lord Jesus for blessing me to be able to submit this information to you, Apostle Roth, and your listeners. And it's just a wonderful thing to be a child of a living God and ear to the kingdom of heaven, and have it be confirmed by the word of God that I do, and we do have a place in the kingdom of heaven, in Jesus' name. Now, back to you, Apostle Ra. Amen, amen, and amen again. Kingdom, our topic of discussion for this episode is 110% sin. Now, Minister Todd, I had read your testimony that you gave today about how God delivered you from drugs and alcohol, and after being delivered supernaturally from ice, heroin, acid, crack, cocaine, and alcohol, and being locked up over 41 times, and now over 20 years free, man, your declaration of 110% free says a lot. I say this because many people don't see this type of or kind of testimony in their lifetimes. And with that being said, being 110% sin-free is supernatural. It's divine mercy. It's God's divine grace by the power of the Holy Ghost that enables us to be sin-free. We cannot achieve it on our own. So first of all, what is sin? Sin is an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law. We most often think of sin as wrongdoing or a transgression of God's law. Sin also includes a failure to do what is right. Kingdom sin also offends people. It is violence. It is lovelessness toward the other person and ultimately rebellion against God. The Bible teaches sin involves a condition in which the heart is corrupted and has become inclined toward evil, which began with Adam and Eve and the forbidden fruit. As with Eve to Adam, the tendency of sin begins with a subtle appeal to something attractive and good in itself. Sin a lot of times feels good, looks good, tastes good, but carries 
many consequences. Genesis and Romans teaches that Adam and Eve did not sin for themselves, but as they are the first created, originally sinless, they act as representatives for the human race. Since then, sin, condemnation, sinfulness, and the consequences thereof have marred us all. Every child now enters the world marked by sin. But God, kingdom, how do we become or live sin free, which some say is impossible? Well, Paul teaches God wants to help us through the Holy Spirit and the shed blood of Jesus, which crushed sin's grip. Hyssop. A spiritual herb used to purify the soul. Hyssop is a symbol of purity and God's protection. Hyssop was used to mark the doorpost with lamb's blood during the first Passover. Kingdom, we also have this special incense from another herb, the balm in Gilead. The balm of Gilead was one of the several components of the special incense. That was used twice daily in the Holy Temple in Jerusalem from the region of Gilead where it was produced. It is used as a healing ointment. Now Jesus, Yeshua, becomes our balm. It is him we call on in our times of trial for healing and comfort. Since Adam's sin is referred to as a sickness of which our souls need healing, spiritual healing, Praise God. Kingdom, the blood of Jesus, Hissa, the balm in Gilead are all forms of intercession that was released on the day of Pentecost for healing for our souls, which translates to our deliverance. So apply them to your situations from addictions and impulses. The Holy Spirit saturates the realm of our prefrontal cortex and rewires our systems and adds balance to our impulses and our impulse decision-making circuits. Kingdom next, we need to want to be delivered. And we study the Word of God. I believe the Word of God is so powerful that it can transform any and every life. Just one word from God and you will never be the same. There is executive power in the word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Will thou be made whole? Some may have difficulties because you have one eye on Jesus and one eye looking someplace else, and we seem cross-eyed when it comes to our deliverance. However, put both eyes on Jesus and never doubt, and he will bring you through and he'll bring you out. His grace will make you 110% sin-free. Minister Todd, please give the final words on our topic of discussion, 110% sin-free. Uh, you know what? I think, I think suitably I would say to anybody listening to this broadcast, you know, how bad do you want it? Are you serious about being set free? And yeah. you, you really, really, really have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. If you're at the end of your rope and you know you're there, and, 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 and you're just tired. If you've had enough, if enough is enough, if, if you're saying that it to, to yourself, you're at the end of the road, you're at the end of your rope, if, you're, if, you're, if the enemy has you uh, plotting or planning or, or dabbling with the spirit of suicide, if you can't get your head together, if you just can't get a moment to, to think clearly, if you just don't see a way out, you feel like the walls are closing in on you, and you feel like there's something on your back, which is probably the enemy, a stronghold of some kind, and that right there at this very moment, uh, because Jesus is no respect of persons, all you have to do is just cry out in the name of Jesus. 
Now, here's the thing. If you want to come out of bondage, you've got to be serious about the fact that that's what you want. And you also have to be serious about the fact that when you go to God, you can't play with this. You can't hand him a 50-50, well, God, I need you to do this and I'll do that. No, because if you could fix it all, any of it, you wouldn't need him at all. But the, the, but, but the bondage is more than anything you can do something with. You've got to be set free in the name of Jesus. So when you go to him, you have to be honest with yourself. And then you have to be honest with him that you have a problem that you cannot fix, number one. Number two, that you need him to set you free and that you want to be delivered in Jesus' name. And you must be sincere about that because the Lord already has the conviction. What he wants is your confession. He'd rather have you to be free than condemned. And that's how you get it, through your confession with your heart, meaning it and crying out to the Lord with a sincere heart, and he will come in and sup with you and set you free. Amen, amen, and amen again. Minister Todd, please, sir, introduce yourself to the kingdom. My name is Pastor Gregory Lee Todd, and I'm known as the minister, gospel recording artist. Amen. Amen. And please tell us about the music being featured during this podcast, Muscle Hustle and Take Me Back. Okay, so when I was in the world, I I put all my strength toward doing, you know, what I was doing for the enemy. When I was working, living for the enemy, living for Satan, working for him, I, I, I went off the deep end. I put everything that I had into going to the clubs, into drinking the alcohol, into you know, sinning like like to, to my very end. I, I, I poured myself out for the world. I gave it all. But when the Lord came and got me and changed my life, he had such a significant effect on my spirit and my soul that I said, Lord, I don't want to just work just as effectively as I did for the kingdom of Satan. I want to go beyond that for you. I want to put all that I got, all my mind, all my heart, soul, and my spirit, all my strength, into living for you. And that's where this song, Muscle Hustle, is birthed forth from, to let you know that, you know, you can put in the work for the world, but you're not going to have that much of a return. But if you put your muscle to good, honest, godly, hard work, and you pursue God with that, and you're faithful with what he's called you to do, and you put your gift to work for the kingdom with all you got, you're going to get a return unlike anything you've ever seen in my life. Now, I'm talking to older individuals as well, but I'm established in this with young people because the world has a lot to offer. But why go after what the world has for you when the word of God states to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you're going to put the work in, put the work in for the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll be able to put your hands to every single thing you need in your life. Amen. Back to you, Apostle. How may the kingdom support your ministry and purchase your music? You could just simply go to my website. It's www.therealminister.com. www.therealminister.com. And you'll find everything you need right there. Find me on the site, uh, Facebook. Um, on the net as the minister, T-H-E-M-I-N-I-S-T-A. I'm all over the place. Amen. Amen. And if they want to book you, is that information on your website? Yeah, you can, you can book me right there, or you can reach me at the office at 678-768-7357, the direct office of Thunderstorm International. And, uh, yeah, everything you need is either going to be on the site or you can reach us here at the home office. Amen. Kingdom, the music of Minister Todd is in rotation on Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio International. Kingdom, Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on Apple Podcast, iHeart Radio, including the iHeart Radio app on your Roku. Spotify.
Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. You may download episodes from www.speaker.com. Please don't forget the apostrophe and let's. We are live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time from KingdomInfluencersBroadcast.com and 11 a.m. every Saturday from SensationalSoundsRadio.net. Stream us 24-7 from the Weekend Channel. TV. Please write to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com. Please follow us on Twitter at Ross Apostle. Please visit our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International. Please download our app on your radio store on your cell phones under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International. You may also find Let's Talk to the Lord Radio on Kingdom. You may now ask Alexa to play Let's Talk Radio. Kingdom, you may now ask Alexa to play Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International. And she'll play Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. Kingdom, Let's Talk to the Lord is your 24-hour station for talk shows, gospel news, radio interviews, and gospel music. On Amazon, order our book, Spiritual Guidance Through Alzheimer's Disease, authored by my sister, Kimberly V. Porter. All of my music are available on Amazon and all digital stores. Lord, Give Me Another Chance, featuring Sean E. Scales and Tamara Lloyd, is available under a Apostle John E. Ross, and Remember Now, Thy Creator, featuring King David the Vessel, A New Duel and Doctrine, is listed under Minister John E. Ross. If you would like to listen to our radio station on your Roku, please locate your MyTuner app on your Roku, and then search Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Station. So, Kingdom un. Till next time, may God bless you, and may God keep you living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Take me back, take me back. Listen to me, folk. I know we got a lot of brothers and sisters still out there that's dealing with whatever y'all dealing with, you know. But y'all, the God we serve is a forgiving God. He wants me to let every one of y'all know that if you'll turn your situation over to him, he'll fix it. Come on, let's go. I'm away from home, and I'm all alone. Sitting on the curb, my money and dope are gone. I can't go to my crib, cause my girl is mad. Cause once again, I took all of the money she had. Every time she trusted me, I let her down. Was a junkie then, and ain't no better now. When I'm searching the ground, looking for a hit. If I find me a nick, Lord, I swear I quit. But I know it's a lie, cause I need a blast. And it's gotten so bad, had them all in the trash. See, I made the choice, so I can't get mad. But my daughter's at home, and counting on her dad to walk in. The door and to give her a hug, but it's only a pipe dream because I'm on them drugs. Now I heard some women the word that God's forgiven, but could he do it for me in spite of the way that I'm living? Because I'm out in the streets, strung out on the rock. I got nothing to lose, I might as well give it a shot. So I'm asking you, my father above, in the midst of all the alcohol and drugs, in the midst of me sleeping with men and women, would any of this stuff cancel my position? Then I heard a voice in the heart of the trap, it was soft and sweet and said, I'll take you back. In the midst of this, and in spite of that, it'll leave you strong and go under the trap just to rescue you. And it's as simple as that. To my prostitution, it's not Cain and Jesus. I understand it's all the same, but if it's one thing that I know that she'll do, it's the one that's waiting just to get to you. So take all your worries and lay them down, right at his feet, and watch him turn around. You may be ashamed, too ashamed to ask.
but he's ready and willing to throw everything in the past. So just lift your hands toward the sky, to the one that will never leave you or just lie. That'll make the changes of what you need and fix it now, up now, as long as now, you now, believe. Now, 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 now,